In the early 20th century, Jews from Eastern Europe were, f were fleeing religious persecution. They were coming to the United States in droves. One family by the name of Karnofsky came from Lithuania. Now, this family had gone through a lot. It was really hard. They were scared and vulnerable, and they were coming into a new country. But they made a commitment to help and uplift those around them that they could. Now, they didn't have much, but they knew they had more than some other people. So while they were still poor, they wanted to find others to uplift and to support. And one day they met this young man, seven-year-old boy. He was alone, he was hungry, he was having a really rough time. And so they brought him into their house and they fed him and they loved him up. And then he went back home. And the next day he came back and they fed him and they loved him up and they sang him Russian lullabies and they talked to him in Yiddish and they just adored him. Well, he loved them too. And so they basically adopted him as their kind of adoptive son as we do sometimes. We adopt the family of our choice. And he ended up working for them. And Mr. Karnofsky really, really loved this young man. He would teach him uh, Russian songs, Jewish songs, and he even loaned this young man the money to buy his first instrument. Later, when this young man became a professional musician and composer, which, by the way, got kicked off when he was 12 years old, he used these Jewish melodies and compositions, such as St. James Hospital and Go Down Moses. The little boy grew up and wrote a book about this family, this Jewish family who adopted him in 1907, and he proudly and fluently spoke Yiddish because of them. And in memory of this family and the, and the way that they reached across racial, ethnic, religious lines to bring him into their family, he wore the Star of David until his dying day. His name was Louis Armstrong. The year of his death, Louis Armstrong said, now I must tell you that my whole life has been happiness through all the misfortunes, etc. I did not plan anything. Life was there for me and I accepted it. And life, whatever came out, was beautiful to me. And I love everybody. Now that is the example of possibility for all of us. Even in tragic and trying and difficult times, there is the spark of love and connection. Will we remember the truth of who we are, that it transcends our ethnicities or our racial identification. It transcends our gender identification, it transcends our sexual orientation, it transcends all of that, it transcends whatever country we live in. And it's the space of love. And that is the place where God shows up. And it shows up within each and every one of us. And we get to be the place where that shows up. We get to be the place where healing happens. We get to play, be the place to show what it looks like to create a paradigm of peace and healing and well-being. We get to be the place where it shows up. See, this week is all about us stepping into a collective healing of ourselves and also the planet. In the Science of Mind textbook, it says, healing is not creating a perfect idea or a perfect body. It's revealing an idea that is already perfect. Just like in the seed, an acorn, the oak tree is already within it. 
the pattern of perfection is already within it. And we are here to reveal that pattern of perfection on this planet at this time, for such a time as this. Because when we marshal our spiritual forces, when we want to answer the big questions and, and tackle the big issues, when we vision for guidance and, and insight, we reveal magnificent ideas that can both anchor us and drive us forward into creating a world that works for everyone. To me, it gives meaning. It fills me with passion and possibility. Because we believe that we, here at Centers for Spiritual Living, we believe that there is only one thing. Now, some people call it God, or source, or the universe, the infinite everything. It is everywhere present, and its nature is love. It is peace itself. And in the Bible, they described it as the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, and the thing that has no end. And if it is everywhere present throughout all time and throughout all space, it must be here right now. And we must be a part of it. Because there's no thing outside of it, it's only this one thing. So we're contained within it, which means we're a part of it and connected to all that is everywhere, which also means that we can have an impact even if we're here and something's troubling out there. But the impact starts from within. The impact starts with us creating the example of possibility. It's great to say, may there be peace on earth. But what does it mean when we practice it? I totally believe that collective intentionality is our superpower, and so I am really here, ready, and geared in to activate our superpower. I'm ready. And I know that our ceremony that we have Capitalizing on the power of the spring equinox creates shifts in this planet. Because we're uniting with a force for good that is bigger than us. We're uniting with something that has more power than any of us individually has. We're uniting with a good that transcends time and space. We're uniting with that possibility, that seed of what the unfoldment looks like. And we practice this oneness. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been a little stirred recently. Are you upset about the war in Ukraine? And how about the war that's been going on in Syria for 11 years? I remember when I learned about that and I was trying to figure it out, I couldn't understand. It was like three different parties going through and in the 11 years, there's been over 6.8 million Syrians displaced. There's violence erupting in Ethiopia right now. And what about the violence in our own country? The racial violence that continues to happen all of that stirs me, and I want to shift it and be the place of possibility where love and peace show up. But I have to think about this because it's in our collective consciousness. If we are indeed connected, where can I bring the consciousness of peace on this planet? Am I warring with the people around me? 
Am I planting landmines for somebody to discover? Am I throwing missiles of hate at somebody out there who I don't like is throwing missiles? Am I perpetuating the same thing that I am not agreeing with? Because if I am, that means that I get to look within me to heal that within me. We were having a conversation on Beyond Limits, uh, which is a class that I teach last week, and we were actually talking about abundance, the, the principle of abundance. And I was telling a story about how so many people who win the lottery, they, within six months, they're back into the same financial state that they were at. Most people who win the lottery within six months have lost it all. Now, why is that? It's because they haven't cultivated the consciousness of abundance, which means they have to be willing to be the place where abundance shows up. Otherwise, we just sabotage ourselves and we get rid of it all. Abundance shows up when we're willing to know that it is our birthright. Every single person on the planet deserves abundance. And not only that, but God itself is made up of the most abundant source of the universe because it's everywhere. It is everything. How much more abundance is that? It is even infinite. It's so infinite that we can't even comprehend it. And that's what God is. And God is here now within each and every one of us. And so our own acceptance of it allows it to flow through us so we can be the space where it shows up. But a lot of people want to become poor. They say, oh, well, you know, I don't deserve it. But you can't be poor enough to help the poor people on the planet. Just like if you want to help people be well, you can't get sick enough to help people who are sick. The only way for somebody to be elevated is to be in the space of wholeness and well-being. Whenever I'm healthy, whole, and well, I can uplift others. When I'm in the space of abundance, I can be the shift to uplift those around me. But I have to be willing to accept it within my own self. Which means, if something is happening within me, like violence, hate, and othering, I am just perpetuating the same thing that I don't want to have happen. And the only way to transcend that is to be the space of peace and love in the face of violence and hate and othering. You know, a lot of, a lot of religions want to draw a circle and say this is, this is our sacred and holy people and everybody else is the other. And what we do is we just draw a circle around everybody and say, we are all a part of this. And we all have an impact and a place to make a change within it. And it looks different for everybody. Bengambiki Habiyarama wrote this book called The Great Pearl of Wisdom. And in it he says, the end of love looks like the beginning of war. And I say, the end of war looks like the beginning of love. Jimi Hendrix said, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. Dr. Martin Luther King said, we will not build a peaceful world by following a negative path. It is not enough to say we will not wage war. It is necessary to love peace and to sacrifice for it. We must concentrate not merely on the negative expulsion of war, but on the positive affirmation of peace. If we are to take a stand, we are to take a stand for peace. So what do you stand for? What do you want to perpetuate? So let us use the momentum of this time of year to create the seeds of possibility to plant what we would love to see in this world. This is a really sacred and holy time of year. 
Today's Ostara, or the spring equinox. It's the first official day of spring, the time when the night and the day are equal. Everything is in harmony. There is peace and balance in the energy of this space. I think it's really important to recognize that um, I just want to call out the idea of cultural appropriation with the directions. People have claimed that it's not our culture, but the fact is, is if you look at anywhere on the planet, there are earth-based traditions that call forth the energy of nature, the energy of the direction. So whatever culture, we're not appropriating it because it's the earth's culture. Worshiping nature is everywhere. <laughs> And I know that the earth-based traditions that I've studied, also there's, there's so much truth to acknowledging how we're, we're interconnected to this planet, to recognizing how much we are so connected to all of it and a vital part of all of it. I didn't really get it until I did the, um, what was it called, the, the, the place where the moon goes in front of the sun. <laughs> Eclipse! Okay, so there was an eclipse recently, and I went to the eclipse in Oregon. It was a few years ago. And I'm, and I'm at the eclipse. I was at a campsite in Oregon, and there, there are people, I mean, there's so many of us all at this campsite. And there was dogs barking and, and babies crying and everything. And, the, and then, like, the, sun, the moon went in front of the sun, and this sea of darkness and quiet filled the space. And I felt, I, I just felt like uplifted. I felt like something went through my body and I felt completely high and I was like, whoa, whoa. It was powerful and amazing. And then the sun peeked out and it dissipated. And I was like, okay. <laughs> There, there's some, so those of you who've, who've experienced it, you know. There's, but the thing is, it's like, I didn't realize how connected I was. I didn't realize how much I was impacted until I viscerally felt this shift in my body. And I thought, there's, there's way more, I'm way more connected and in tune to this world than I even realized. We're connected to the moon and the sun, we're connected to these flowers and the plants. There's the energy of the springtime that is, that is moving up within us right now. I feel it to the depth of my being. This is what honoring our cycles is about. And these cycles happen everywhere, and we're a part of them. And so we recognize and know and honor this time of year to step into the power and the presence that's already here, that's already part of our natural expression on this planet. Tapping in and tuning into it. So I love this time of year where night and day are equal length, Masculine and feminine, inner and outer, and perfect balance. The, the, the idea that the light represents the doingness, right? It's the kind of, it's the energy of the, of the going out and, and being productive and making things happen, right? Just kind of that energy. The dark is a time of being receptive, of listening, the non-doingness. Both are essential and valuable. But right now, we're right in the middle, right in the perfect harmony of it, where seeds of possibility are planted. So Astara takes its name after the Germanic goddess, O Esther, or Ostara. She was traditionally honored in the month of April, and the April festivities on Earth-based religions, they have done this April festivities that celebrate fertility, renewal, and rebirth. Other parts of the planet, they call her different names, 
But all around the planet, there are these festivals of renewal and rebirth, all over. Now, the beautiful thing about Ostara is that she had her, her symbols, her symbols of fertility with her. And this is the symbol of the egg. As a matter of fact, the, the Christians adopted this time of year to represent the time when Jesus was re resurrected. It's, of course, Easter's in a couple of weeks. But the name Easter came from Ostara because she was the place, the time of year for rebirth. And she, she had these eggs representing her. And you think about estrogen, it also comes from that same word. The way that women have fertility is through this. The same word. Also, her symbol is the Easter bunny. <laughs> Not the Easter bunny, but the bunny itself. Easter <laughs> adopted the bunny. <laughs> Because why? Bunnies, they're pretty uh, representative of uh, fertility, right? <laughs> they are, they're prolific like bunnies, right? <laughs> and so, so that's the symbol, those are her symbols. Those are her symbols that allow this time of year to be represented so we can have visual representations out into the world of what she is. So the spring equinox is a reminder that it's time to celebrate and plant seeds, both physically and metaphorically. It's a time for uh, bringing blooms into possibility, where the seed contains all potentiality, where it's full of promise and new life. Don't we want to plant new life on this planet? Don't we want to be the place where the seeds of possibility show up? See, we get to do that today in a way that's powerful. And the cool thing is about this day is it's all in balance just today. Today is that secret time of equilibrium where the under underlying energy is a time of growth and expansion. It's a time to bloom, to create, to procreate. And so we're going to do a ceremony. Now, I didn't realize how long I've been doing ceremonies, but my mom just had a phone call with me. And she reminded me of seven-year-old Abby. I was known as Abby. Seven-year-old Abby. And when I was growing up, I had these parakeets. And the parakeets were, um, well, we wanted them to have babies. And so I decided as a seven-year-old that I was going to officiate a wedding for them to help them <laughs> procreate a little. <laughs> so I decorated their little cage and I put a little veil over it and I did a little ceremony for them. Unfortunately, it didn't work. And sadly, PV, one of my parakeets, the male, he passed away. And my mom said that when he passed away, I insisted on making sure he had a little parakeet coffin, which was a pencil box from my school. And we put a little Kleenex around there, and I officiated a little memorial service <laughs> for our little parakeet. So apparently I knew then the importance of ceremony and ritual. <laughs> I've been practicing for a while. But the thing is, is when we do ceremony, we do an, an, a representation of a change that happens inwardly. And it really does things. It really shifts and changes us. So I want to invite you into an Easter ceremony. And what I want you to do is I want to make sure you have this piece of paper. So you should have been handed a piece of paper. If you don't, please raise your hand. Uh, and for those of you online, this is your time to make sure you have a piece of paper. Now, this paper that I'm handing out to you is um, handmade paper made in Nepal by craftspeople. And this paper has seeds in it, which include snapdragon, petunia, beard tongue, daisy, thyme, poppy, foxglove, catchfly, maiden pinks, and chamomile. Uh, they need partial shade, four hours a day of direct sunlight, and be sure that you water them and keep them moist until they germinate. 
So we will be writing something down on the seed paper, but I want to make sure that you know that this is real paper for you to plant in your garden, because I want you to plant these seeds that are going to not only metaphorically happen, but also physically happen for you. Okay, so we're going to do three things. We're going to have you ground and center yourself. We're going to do some heart math, uh, love, sending out energy to the entire world, and we're going to do a meditation. So I'd like to invite you to stand to start with our grounding. And I want you to imagine the power of the earth. Just look at the, the, the plants here, and they have to root down into the earth in order to feel grounded and to be lifted up. You have to be grounded. So I just want you to imagine to send grounded roots into the earth. Make sure your feet are about hip widths apart. And I want you to imagine that you have roots growing down into the earth. And I also want you to imagine that there's roots coming up from the earth, connecting around you, in and through and as you, that you are connected to this divine part of this planet. The strength and the stability of the earth is yours. And now I want you to do some heart math. So put your hands over your heart in your groundedness. And I want you to imagine breathing in and out of your heart area. So breathe deeply but normally. And just imagine that breath is coming in and out of your heart space. As you inhale, feel as if your breath is flowing in through your heart, and when you exhale, it's leaving through your heart. And I want you to activate a positive feeling in your heart space. Recall a time when you have felt feelings of love or appreciation. Perhaps remember the love you feel for a close friend or a family member or a beloved pet. And just get into that feeling tone of love, gratitude, and appreciation. And now I want you to imagine a peaceful place. Imagine that love and appreciation opens to reveal a peaceful place to you, a place where you feel the peace. It might be a beach, it might be a field on top of a mountain. Feel the energy of peace. And when you have this feeling of peace and love, I want you to send that peace and love out into Ukraine. I want you to send it to all the people who are not feeling the peace. Send it to Russia. Send it to Syria. Send it to Ethiopia. Send it to friends or family that you know are in conflict right now. And know that that energy transforms the world. And now I'd like you to take a seat and close your eyes. And we're going to invite Ostara into our experience. So imagine that you are on a hilly countryside. The land is nearing the end of its wintertime slumber. And you face the east and you watch the sun as it begins to rise. Rays of light shimmer onto the land and into the sky and experience the energy of the dawn, of new possibilities. And as the glowing disk of the sun becomes visible above the hills, you see the goddess Ostara walking towards you. 
And as she moves towards you, the land awakens with new life. Her radiant face is glowing, and she's carrying a golden basket filled with colored eggs. Next to her, hopping along, is her favorite companion, a frisky, magical rabbit of abundance. And as they come closer to you, you see that every step that they take, the land around them bursts into new life and grows green. Grasses sprout from the ground, herbs flourish, trees grow, new leaves as they pass by, flowers bloom. And you welcome them in the spring that they bring. And as you meet face to face, you see that the goddess of Stara and the rabbit are having a smiling and welcome energy for you. Ostara holds her golden basket towards you and invites you to choose one of the eggs in it as her gift to you. You notice that each of the eggs is a different color and you pick one that really resonates with you. And so hold the egg that you selected in both of your hands, looking at this color, reflecting at what it means to you. And Ostara invites you to ask the sacred egg to give you a message about personal growth. What personal seed is planted in you to grow for the year? Pay attention to whatever words or symbols or sensations or impressions or other forms that emerge for you when you ask this question. And then Ostara asks you to ask the sacred egg to give you a message about collective global gro growth. What seeds are planted now in the collective consciousness that you are to participate in and to grow for the year? Stara now invites you to take this sacred egg and its power of new growth into yourself. And so you hold it and you place it into your heart. And as you do it, you absorb it into your being. You experience the renewal of springtime. You radiate vitality. You are immersed in the newness of the planting of new possibilities in your soul. So feel the vitality. And you bid Ostara and her rabbit companion farewell for now, knowing that they continue within your consciousness to guide you throughout the year. And when you feel ready, take several slow, deep breaths and return to this place, to this time. And take a few moments and write on the seed paper on one side your personal experience of growth and the message for you. And then on the other side, write in the message about the collective consciousness that you are to participate in for the year. And I want you to think about how are you going to attend to these seeds this year? Are you going to help them grow and foster them along? One way you can do it is to restore balance in your life by practicing spring cleaning, including cleaning out your emotional baggage. See a pro practitioner or a therapist or somebody to kind of clean out any thoughts and do some forgiveness processes to make you a space of love and peace. I also encourage you 
to give to humanitarian efforts that are happening. If you go to the website csl.org, there are some procured nonprofits that our organization is supporting that will help across the globe. And you can also join on a 1 p.m. meditation that is also given by our home office that is a 10-minute meditation on peace to support the world and experiencing collective peace. So I know that from our pr practiced oneness with life and our committed availability to greater wisdom, we become powerful healers of transformation and newness. And so I know and claim that today is a day where the seeds have been planted, the ground has been watered, and the roots are taking place. And that I move forward today with the confidence that as I experience peace, as I experience love, as I experience joy, I spread it around the planet. And as I flower and bloom and shine, that this shining gives others permission to uplift those around them so that we can be the bridges, we can be the place where possibility shows up. And so I know and claim that it's not just one seed that's planted, that we bloom and produce fruits and trees and more seeds of peace and possibility wherever we go. And that truly that there is a momentum of transformation that happens as a result of what has happened today right here and right now. And I know that God, the infinite presence, nature itself is creating the highest possibility of good for myself and for this planet. And I am just stepping into it. I'm just being the revelation of it. I'm being the fulfillment of that truth in and through and around me and in and through and around everybody here. And so I claim and know the joy of renewal, the joy in remembering who we are, the joy of possibility, the joy of imagining a new idea and watching it ex being expressed on this planet right now. And so as I take that stand, I release this prayer. I know that God's got it. I know that I am a part of it and I am grateful to be the space of peace and love and joy right here and right now. And so it is.